This is the iPad's home screen. Press the physical home button on the iPad to reach this screen from anywhere. There are two main application icons you will use. The first is the mobility icon which is used to turn on internet data access for the iPad. The second is the Freedom App icon that will start the Freedom application. You may also optionally use a third icon to access the Notepad application. The first icon we will use is the Mobility app. Once open, slide the County button to the right until it turns green and status indicates it is connected. You may then press the Home button on the iPad to return to the home screen. Next press the Freedom app icon. After the application opens, you will need to log in. Most of the fields will be filled, but you will need to tap your finger once in the password field and enter the password. You may type the password directly into the field or copy and paste from a different location. Tapping in any field will display the keyboard. When you are done with the keyboard, tap the keyboard button on the lower right side to hide it. Once you have entered the password, tap the green login button at the bottom of the screen to log in. If the button is not visible, use your finger to scroll to the bottom of the screen until it becomes visible. After tapping the login button, if you see this message, it indicates your login was successful and alerts you that all data viewed and entered into the application is subject to the Georgia Open Records Act. Tap the OK button to continue. This shows the home screen for the Freedom app. All actions are started from this screen. Note the three tabs near the top of the screen, where the Favorites tab is currently active and shows the icons we will use. Some icons are enabled and some are disabled based on their availability or your unit's current status. This tutorial will focus on the most used icons which include Security Check, Self-Initiate, Unit Status, Map, Active Calls, My Last 60 Hours, Available, Out of Service and Log Out. Let's begin with the Unit Status icon. Tap this icon to see a list of all units by unit number and beat. It also shows their current status and location. Note that each unit is color-coded based on their current activity. For example, those in red are on scene, those in brown are en route to a scene, those in green are available for calls, and those in gray are out of service and unavailable for calls. Tap a unit in the list to view details about the unit and any call it may be on. This call is a Signal 41 or vehicle crash. You may tap the street address link to launch a map showing the unit's location. Once navigation displays, you may tap the large blue button if you want to begin voice-guided navigation to the unit's location. This screen shows what navigation may look like. It will provide turn-by-turn -turn directions to reach the unit's location. You may end navigation by tapping the red button labeled End. To return to the Freedom app without ending navigation, tap the tiny Freedom back arrow in the left side of the status bar. If you return to the Freedom app with navigation still running, you may return to navigation by clicking the tiny blue button with an arrow icon near the center of the status bar. Let's return to the unit status detail screen. Tapping the notes button will show any notes recorded about this call. Scroll down to see more information including the other units on this same call. The buttons at the bottom of the screen will allow us to place our unit en route to this scene, mark that we have arrived at the scene or simply exit this screen. Let's return to the previous screen by tapping the back arrow in the upper left corner. By long pressing a single entry in the listing, we can access a pop-up menu that provides additional options, including sending a text-based message to the unit, view more detail about the unit, or locate the unit on the map. By pressing the Send Message option, you are presented with this screen. Note the text box and Send button are located at the bottom of the screen. You must tap inside the text box to activate the keyboard where you may compose your message, and then tap the Send button. The field at the top shows the unit that will receive your message. Tap the drop-down button to choose another unit. Let's tap the back button to return to the unit listing. The second option in the pop-up is Show Unit Detail. This shows additional information about the unit. The last option in the pop-up is not covered in this tutorial. An important use of unit status is to determine our own unit's current status. Scroll to the top of the listing where a filter text box is visible. 
Tap this text box and enter the first few letters of our unit's name which will filter the listing and allow us to quickly confirm our unit's current status. This shows unit X-Ray 2 is currently out of service and not available for calls. Later in this tutorial we will show an easier way to identify your own unit's status. Next, let's return to the Freedom Home screen and take a brief look at the icon labeled Active Calls. Active Calls is similar to unit status but only shows units that are on active calls. This is useful for finding calls that an X-ray unit may be able to assist with, such as a vehicle crash that may require traffic assistance or waiting on a wrecker to arrive. Most of our actions are self-initiated using the security check icon or the self-init icon. The most common of these is vacation checks using the security check icon, so we will look at that one next. Tap the security check icon to show a list of all current security checks. This list includes both county residents submitted vacation checks, as well as other requests, such as traffic complaints and extra patrol requests. The X-ray unit primarily focuses on the entries marked as vacation checks. Here is a quick look at the web form residents may use to submit these types of checks to the sheriff's office. Note that each security check is identified by a unique four-digit security ID number. Let's tap a vacation check entry in the list to view the details of the check. The vacation check details screen will indicate the start and end dates the check should occur, as well as details the residents shared such as alarm system, automated lights, cars that will be present and more. The bottom of the detail screen will show previous checks including the last check that was performed at the residence. Any vacation check that has not been checked within 24 hours is eligible to be checked again. When you reach the residence and are ready to perform the vacation check, tap the self-initiate button at the bottom of the security check screen. This will bring you to the self-initiate main screen which is the same for all self-initiated calls. Since we are performing a vacation check, we must first tap the drop-down to change the nature of the call from business check to vacation check. Once the nature listing displays, either filter the list using the text box at the top, or optionally scroll to the bottom of the list to locate the vacation check option, and tap it to choose that option. The nature field now correctly shows that a vacation check is the purpose of our call. Further down is the notes section where you may optionally add any notes before you initiate the call. When you are ready to begin your vacation check, tap the blue button labeled Send. If you see this message pop-up window appear tap the OK button to close it. The dispatch event screen will display which informs dispatch that your vacation check has begun. Before performing the vacation check, it may be useful to briefly review notes from previous checks at this address. Scroll to the top of the event screen and click the history button which will be active if previous events exist. This will display a list of previous events. Tap on any single event to open that event's detail screen, then tap the notes button to view any notes recorded for that event, just as you would for your current event. After reviewing previous notes, exit your vehicle and perform the vacation check. After the check is complete, you may optionally add notes if needed, and then clear the call. To add notes, tap the notes button. The notes screen will appear without any notes, since you just initiated this new event. Tap the Add Notes button at the bottom to add a new note. Once the note text box appears near the top, tap inside the text box to activate the keyboard and enter your notes. After typing your new note, close the keyboard and tap the Send button at the bottom to submit your notes. The notes screen will appear again displaying your notes at the top. You could add additional notes, but let's tap the Exit button to leave this screen. Once back on the dispatch event screen, it is time to clear the call which will inform dispatch that the call is complete. Tap the clear button to access the clear screen. On the clear screen, we must select a primary disposition for the call. Our calls are generally cleared with a disposition of code 3, which means no action taken. Tap the drop-down list and then tap that option to set our disposition value. Once the disposition is set, we want to verify that the nature of the call is correct, and in this case it is because we were performing a vacation check. However, if the value was not correct, we could tap the reclassify nature drop-down to change it before clearing the call. Once the clear screen has the correct disposition and nature values, tap the send button to notify dispatch that the call has been cleared. This will return you to the screen you were on when you self-initiated your call. 
your unit status will return to available meaning you are not on an active call and are available for new calls. Let's return to the Freedom Home screen. All other call types we initiate use the self-initiate icon. This icon takes us directly to the self-initiate screen. From here we select the nature of the call from the drop-down listing and begin the call similar to vacation checks. Adding notes and clearing the call is also the same. Other call types include business check, park or area check and subdivision check. These are all initiated by choosing the appropriate nature option under the self-init icon. This shows a business check as the nature of the call. Next, let's focus on an important but often overlooked button that is visible throughout the application. Note the button in the lower left corner of the screen will always indicate your current status by the tiny graphic shown next to your unit name. The different icons shown emulate those on the home page based on the current status of your unit. The first example of the button shows we are out of service. The second indicates we are available for calls, and the third shows we are on an active call. This button not only indicates your unit's current status, but tapping it can return you to the your active call dispatch event screen from anywhere. Here we show we are on the home screen, but the button icon indicates we are on an active call. Simply tap this button to return to the dispatch event screen showing your active call. Next let's take a brief look at the map icon on the Freedom Home screen. Tap this icon to view a map of your unit's current location. The upper left corner has buttons which allow us to switch from the base map to a satellite view if desired. Based on settings, it is also possible to view the location of other units on the map. Next, let's try the icon labeled My Last 60 Hours. This will display the last 60 hours of events for our unit in chronological order, with the most recent at the top. This provides a way for us to review our recent calls, as well as obtain a count of call types performed at the end of each patrol. By tapping on an event, we can view the details of that event, even though the call is no longer active. Returning to the home screen once more, let's briefly see how to use the available and out of service icons. These buttons allow us to switch from out of service status to available for calls and vice versa. Note that only one of these icons will be enabled at any given time based on our current status. We must be out of service since the available icon is enabled. The graphic on the unit button at the bottom confirms we are out of service. This might be the case just after logging into Freedom. Let's become available by tapping the available icon now. Tap the yes button to confirm your status change to available, meaning you are available for calls. Now only the out of service icon is enabled. Our available status is again confirmed by the graphic on our unit button down below. Let's try changing back to an out of service status by tapping the out of service icon. The next screen shows we have chosen a reason code of busy not available for calls. Our location is shown at the South Precinct and have added a comment showing we are working on documentation. Press the send button to submit the status change. Back on the home screen we see that our status has changed back to out of service as only the available icon is enabled. Next, let's take a look at the emergency button in the title bar which is identified with an exclamation mark. Pressing and holding this button is for extreme situations where you feel you are in immediate danger. This button is similar to the orange button on the radios in that it sends a county-wide alert once activated. Upon activation, dispatch will immediately contact you asking if you are code 4 and you should respond code 4, accidental activation, if indeed the activation was not intentional. We suggest always returning to the iPad home screen when not using the Freedom app to help prevent inadvertent activation of this button. Finally, let's see how to log out of the Freedom app and shut down the iPad. On the Freedom Home screen, tap the Log Out icon. Once this pop-up appears choose No to not be left on duty. Seeing the login screen will confirm your log out was successful. To shut down, first make sure the power cable is attached to the iPad and power is active. Next, tap the Home button on the iPad and then tap the Settings icon. In Settings, select the General section on the left side and then tap the Shut Down option on the right side. Finally, the iPad will ask you to slide your finger to the right to power off, and the screen will go black. This concludes the lesson.
Thank you for watching this introductory tutorial on using the Freedom app.